I was joined earlier by Dr. Roger Pielke, Jr., Professor of Environmental Studies at the University of Colorado at Boulder. Now, he was for years, or has for years, studied the damage from climate-related disasters. I would call him a world expert. Professor Pielke, first, thank you so much for joining uh, us. But let's get clear that uh, you're not what's uh, dismissed as a, a denier or a sceptic. Uh, you don't doubt the world is warming. You don't doubt there's a threat there. Your concern is people exaggerating and making false claims. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, climate change is real. It's serious. Um, I've been advocating for policies and response for almost 30 years. Uh, but at the same time, we need to be faithful to what science uh, can and can't say and simply be honest uh, with, with where the research is at. All right. So let's get into uh, that. The United Nations, for instance, predicted that we would get a 40 percent increase in disasters between 2015 and 2030. So still seven years to go. Do you believe them? That's an unfortunate uh, abuse of statistics. Uh, they took a data set that uh, shows an increase in disasters because of better reporting around the world from the 1970s, and they drew a line through it uh, and extended it to 2030. Uh, the reality is that since 2000, the, the number of global disasters has been, been flat or slightly declining, which is really good news. It means that the world is doing better with respect to disasters. Disasters require a combination of an exposed population, vulnerability, and an extreme event. Um, so when, when we look for trends in climate, we should always look at climate data, not disaster data. And yet this is a very popular meme. I mean, part of it is, of course, the media, you know, we're also wired up so that a fire in Greece that you wouldn't have known about 40 years ago is now, uh, you know, in your face on the TV news or on the internet. But you've got bodies like the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in the United States today claiming, but listen, the US has just had the all-time highest number of billion-dollar disasters on record. And it strikes me that when they say that, they're pulling a trick that you've been warning against for years. Yeah, we shouldn't use economic data to say anything about climate change. Um, if you take a look, for example, at the U.S., the largest disasters are caused by hurricanes, which strike the, the very populated east and Gulf Coast. Um, there's many more buildings, many more people, much more property. Uh, so, of course, even with the same number of extreme weather events, we're going to have more billion-dollar disasters. Uh, if you want to look at trends in climate, we always should be looking at climate data, not economic data. Uh, it makes for good headlines, but it's not good science. Now, like I suggested, you know, we're seeing uh, uh, TV reports of fires in Canada, fires in Greece in roads, and now floods in Greece. So putting it all together, people get this idea that we're being overwhelmed by climate disasters suddenly. But you've actually plotted, you mentioned this before, but you've plotted climate-related disasters around the world this century. From your graphic, I don't see a trend. But like many people are going to have trouble believing that after all these uh, headlines. How do you come to this conclusion? Yeah, this is a data set that's kept by a group in Belgium, and they have uh, quantitative criteria, number of people uh, killed uh, and dollar damage, number of people displaced. And they track that data, and they have done so for decades uh, with support from the U.S. government. And they, they say that their data is more or less complete since 2000. Um, and so that data set says what it says. And, um, you, you, and I know that there's, uh, you know, a, a lot of media attention paid to disasters these days. But again, we need to be systematic and look at evidence, not at headlines or news stories to, to understand what's actually going on with disasters. But it's hard to, uh, you know, to not be impressed if you're not following the news carefully when you've got, say, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, saying the climate breakdown, the world is now boiling, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And yet, when you look, dig down at the, at his, at the UN's international, intergovernmental panel on climate change, do they actually make the link between climate disasters and, and uh, global warming as, as strongly as he does? Yeah, 30 years ago, uh, governments around the world came together and created the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, to assess uh, the vast literature on, on climate science, climate impacts, climate economics. And their most recent report concluded that, yes, indeed, there are a few extremes that have 
increased and can be attributed to human causes, and notably heat waves uh, and also extreme precipitation. Uh, but most other extremes, tropical cyclones, flooding, meteorological or hydrological drought, uh, do not show those signs. So while it's very easy to put out press releases and make strong statements, um, it's a little bit more difficult, but always more rewarding to go a little bit deeper into what the UN science assessments say. And again, the literature says what it says, uh, and it's important just to understand that and, and be accurate when we represent that data. Uh, Professor Spielke, when you're talking about increase the rainfall, of course, for a continent like Australia, that's actually good news. Sometimes it seems to me that with warming, all the bad is exaggerated, the good is ignored. Here's one thing. I've seen a graphic plotting deaths uh, against rising temperature, uh, and I'm showing uh, audiences that uh, the, the viewers, uh, the red line over the past century is, is uh, rising temperature. And then against that, you see the death rate. The world is warming, Professor, but the death rate is plummeting. Can you explain that? Yeah, the, the world, this is one of the great success stories of science, technology, and policy um, of, of the last 50 years, is that, that as uh, nations have become richer around the world, um, they've also become better able to cope with extreme events. Um, and again, don't look for signals of climate change in human impacts. Uh, we are a very inventive, very clever species, and there are places such as the Bay of Bengal where there used to be tens of thousands of deaths every year, sometimes hundreds of thousands due to typhoons. Um, and now there's warning systems, there's evacuation uh, protocols in place. Uh, it's a really impressive success story, but it's something that's quite different than climate change. Um, and we should not expect to see a signal of climate change in uh, disaster deaths. Yes, my point isn't that. My point is more addressing this fear that seems un out of control, particularly among the young, that as the planet warms, they're likely, to, even more likely to die. You've got people saying, oh, how can I bring a child into this world? Or we won't live till we're 50. Uh, the world is, is, human society is going to collapse. I'm not seeing that in the data, are you? Yeah, I mean, earlier today I met with uh, my class of college students uh, here in Colorado, and that sentiment of being af afraid, uh, fearful of the future because of concern about climate change um, is grounded in a lot of media representations, uh, fictional representations, movies even, celebrities. Um, it's not grounded in an understanding of the science uh, and the data. So climate change is real, of course, um, but it's not apocalyptic and it's not the end of the world. And so understanding that there's a big gap between denying and extreme alarmism um, is, is, I think, a very important for young people to understand. Professor uh, Roger Pielke, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I should recommend uh, viewers to uh, pick up your writings on Substack, uh, which is, uh, I mean, really informative. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it, Andrew.